In 1965, Hillary Rodham arrived at Wellesley College. A Midwestern girl, a Methodist, a fan of the Supremes. This is the mid-1960s, so it's really before the great cultural shift in America. Hillary was not in any way, shape, or form a radical. But as the civil rights and anti-Vietnam War movements swept across college campuses, Hillary was changing. She was experimenting, not just in terms of what kind of hair she wore or what her clothes were, but what she was thinking, um, whether she was that old Midwestern Methodist girl or something more rebellious. Hillary Rodham's political education began at home in suburban Chicago. There, she was influenced by her father's politics. You Rodham was big, gruff, conservative, sort of thought of himself as a rugged individualist type, a, a Goldwater supporter in that era. Extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Barry Goldwater had led a right-wing takeover of the Republican Party. She was fully steeped in, in those ideas, and in order to please her father, became a volunteer for Goldwater in the 64 election. That moderation in the pursuit of justice is no virtue. We opened the Youth for Goldwater office in Park Ridge. I mean, that's what your life was. It was Republicans and there was Barry Goldwater. But her views would be challenged when she left home and went to the old women's Wellesley College in the mid-1960s. She is now living a, a life that is not dictated by her parents, but is affected by what's going on in America at the time. She was up in front of the crowd. She was at the microphone at some of these rallies. She began to be the person that people thought of as, as the one who was leading us. Um, through these really very turbulent, challenging times. Party in Chicago. Hillary would experience the turbulence firsthand in August 1968, when she was home for the summer. And tensions over the Vietnam War erupted at the Democratic Convention in downtown Chicago. Here's this convention going on, right? And Hillary said, we have to go see it. And she and I told my, our mothers that we were going to the movies. And we drove my family station wagon downtown. <laughs> Parked. I have no idea where we parked. I had never driven downtown. Thousands of Chicago police confronted anti-war protesters. As Betsy and Hillary waded into the crowd, they saw an old high school friend. She was there volunteering, patching up heads, and said, you got to be aware of this and everything that's going on. It was chaotic, it was mayhem, but it was also almost beautiful in its portrayal of like, opened up this road and said, this is where you're going, and this is why. The whole world is watching. She knew she was going to go back to Wellesley, and she would find people of like thinking of, of this war has to end. Uh, she had become much more political, as frankly had most of us. Uh, you couldn't really go through those years, the civil rights movement and the anti-Vietnam War movement and everything, all the tumult in America, and not be affected by it. At her graduation the next year, Hillary was chosen by her classmates to be the first student to ever deliver a commencement address at Wellesley. But first, United States Senator Edward Brooke would speak. At the commencement, Senator Edward Brooke, a revered figure for becoming the first black senator from Massachusetts. Uh, and he gives a speech, though, that is really kind of condescending. Senator Brooke basically told us everything was fine and that the people who are protesting are, are kind of like elite uh, ne'er-do-wells. So I can remember sitting in my seat um, just fuming I mean, this is my college graduation, and I am just fuming. And, you know, you we're just, all of us were just ready to pop. As Brooks spoke, Hillary quickly drafted an unplanned rebuttal to the Massachusetts senator. And all of a sudden, I looked up, and Hillary Rodham is rising from her seat and walking to the, mo to the podium. 
and it is a great pleasure to present to this audience Ms. Hillary Rodham. She looked fierce. I mean, she had something to say, and she was going to say it. I find myself in a familiar position, that of reacting, something that our generation has been doing for quite a while now. We're not in the and She began with a complete, utterly um, articulate rebuttal of everything Senator Burke had said. For too long, our leaders have viewed politics as the art of the possible. And the challenge now is to practice politics as the art of making what appears to be impossible possible. We gave her a very, very long standing ovation. But some in the crowd were less enthusiastic. My grandfather, who was just a real curmudgeon, came up to me and said, who was that? So I turned to him and I said, take a good look at her. She's going to be president of the United States someday. And that shut him up. The speech would turn Hillary Rodham into a national celebrity. She was called a voice of her generation. Life magazine picks it up and profiles her. And suddenly, she is emblematic in some way of her generation. And she likes the attention. That was the, probably the first time that Hillary felt what it would be like to be a political leader. And she thought then, well, maybe I can someday be a larger figure on the political stage. I think she knew exactly what she was doing. <laughs> I think she knew that she was stepping out. But that moment captured her and propelled her into the public realm in a way that, that uh, not that many people of her generation were able to achieve. 